I want to thank you once again for attending uh, Boundary Systems um, Wednesday webinars. Uh, once again, today we'll be dealing with the role-based apps in WinChill 11. Uh, my name is Michael Wimberly, and once again, I uh, do work for Boundary Systems, of course. Um, so the general agenda will be a simple introduction of who I am, an overview of Boundary Systems, and a role-based um, apps presentation and demonstration, and then after that, a little bit of Q&A. Um, so once again, just quick overview of myself. Uh, my name is Michael Wimberly. I'm a senior technical specialist at Boundary Systems. I've been working with PTC products for over 20 years now. I'm a certified instructor for Creo and Windchill classes, as well as a uh, certified Windchill implementer. And although Boundary Systems is headquartered in um, Cleveland, I am actually located in Cincinnati, Ohio. A little bit on Boundary Systems. We are, of course, a technology leader. Uh, some of our partners include PTC, Autodesk, eTrage, and some other technical companies as well. Uh, we we consider ourselves one of the, of course, one of the leading technology um, companies uh, because of all the aspects of our companies, as well as the core, um, our sales team, our our technical team. You know, because of the the way that we all work together and the the products that we give out. Uh, we are one of, the, one of the 16th fastest growing private companies in the greater Cleveland area. And some of our general capabilities are product lifecycle management, data management, uh, CAD design and consulting, simulation, and product development. Uh, some of our past awards um, are for the last four years, we've been in the Inc. 5000. Um, then over the last three years, we've been in the Waterhead. Um, 100, um, and then the Waterhead 100 is uh, the fastest growing companies in Northeastern Ohio. Uh, and we haven't gotten anything for 15 yet, but I do expect something to come through for 15. Uh, some of our major uh, accreditations is once again, we are a Windchill certified implementer, uh, PTC certified service provider, and a PTC certified training partner. All right, so. <clears throat> Getting into the presentation. So product development, when we go in and develop products, uh, some of the things that we do, we have people that consume the information, we have people that contribute to the information. So consumers, uh, they wanna go in and get the drawings with dimensions to define tooling and process plans. They wanna get IGES files to send to suppliers for a quote. You know, they wanna see exploded views to understand how things are used and what quantities are used in, in each assembly. Uh, you want to get basic properties such as the quantity in stock. You want to get in production items. You want to get the cost. You want to see who the supplier is. And you also want to see some recent changes. If something has been updated, we want to see recent changes and how it's going to affect, you know, our processes currently uh, going on, as well as um, any manufacturing issues that we may have going on. If you're a contributor, then you may need to go in and review and approve a change order. You may need to view um, a list of tasks. You may need to attach specifications or other documents to an item. You may need to edit requirements. You may need to mark up a model. Or you may also need to create a problem report or non-conformance report. Some of the challenges to, to getting this done is that not everybody for Windchill, not everybody uses Windchill on a regular basis. So with the PLM interface, it could be somewhat too complex for people that need to just get in and get out. They need to just simply find the drawing, find this dimension, and then close it out. They don't need to go through, log in to Windchill, uh, browse the different products or libraries, even go through the search results. They don't need to do any of that. They just simply need to go in, find what they want, look at it, and close out. Uh, with that, even with dealing with some of the uh, PLM systems, there is sometimes too much training that's needed to just simply learn some of the basic functionality. Uh, even with the training, uh, infrequent users <clears throat> may forget because they only get it maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks, so they don't get into it on a normal basis. Um, and a single application does not include all the information needed to complete a task. So although you may find the product that you're looking for, everything that you need may not be right there on the front page. Uh, so you need to go into one of the different tabs to go through and find something um, or simply link to another design object. Uh, the PLM UI, uh, uh, user interfaces can be tailored, but it's often costly to create and maintain customizations. So a lot of times 
people do go in and customize their PLM systems. But when they do that and they do an upgrade, then they have to go through and maintain those customizations through the upgrades. Sometimes that's not as easy, easily done going from one version of the software to another version of the software. Now, with all that, sometimes the lack of timely access to the accurate uh, product information can result in a rework that needs to be done because they didn't get access to the products um, soon enough or they didn't get access to the latest version of the product. You know, it could, it could be delayed. So now because they didn't get to the product in a timely manner, then the, the due date got pushed back. Um, once again, you could, that will, of course, increase cost. And then if you're rushing through it, then sometimes you could end up with a poor quality of a product and you don't want any of that to happen. So the note down at the bottom is traditional PLM can serve many roles, but not optimize for any particular role. So anybody can access the data, but it's not customized based on your role. So if you're a, uh, let's say if you're in marketing, then you see the same interface that someone in engineering is going to see as well. So it's not tailored to you which also means you're going to see too many actions. You're going to get too much information and it's too much to navigate to get through all the information. The solution to that is a tailored application, highly focused on tasks and uh, needs and specific roles. So once again, the purpose of it is for a role. We're going to go through and customize this for a role to complete a specific task. So here we have a production role. We have a purchasing role for the information needed. For all of the ONI system and aggregate it together. So here we have a simple example of a result page. We went in and searched for this particular assembly. We see the drawing for it. That's what we need. We see the parts list for it. We see the quantities. We see the stock. We see the cost, all that information. Not only that, but this also not only integrates with Windchill specifically, but it also deals with PTC integrity as well as SAP. So you can also go in and say force. So you can also go in and integrate these apps with this. So PTC solution uh, is also easy to consume. You can go to it with any device and there's no need for training. Now, currently, and we'll get into this a little bit more, um, it is um, browser based. So through your tablets and things like that, you can go in and still access this through your tablet, but you have to do it through an Internet browser. Uh, there is in the works to actually do a native application for the different tablets. So that's currently in the works. It's just not um, done currently. All right. So once again, some of the benefits is no windshield upgrade. So this doesn't need to upgrade. So when you upgrade your windshield from, let's say, 10 to 11, if you're using this, you don't have to upgrade this when you upgrade windshield. The interface between the two stays consistent. Um, it's easy to deploy and adapt. It's ready out of the box. It's simple, ta simple tailoring to go in and get it to, to look the way you want to get the information that you want. It reduces the errors, increases efficiency, and reduces costs because, once again, individuals see what they need to see when they need to see it without a lot of extra information being displayed. Um, of course, it's also easy to buy. Everything that you need is included, and it's also, of course, attractive licensing. Um, when you're going to look at that. We'll actually address that a little bit once we get through the demo and we go through some additional information. So what is this product? It's PTC Navigate. PTC Navigate allows us to go in. It uses, first off, it uses uh, the PTC ThingWorks application, which deals with their Internet of Things. Um, if you're not familiar with their Internet of Things, it's basically bringing different applications together through the Internet. So this application here will allow us to once again link from our windshield database through a simple browser application as we're looking at here for anyone to access through the Internet. So we don't have to be on our windshield server to do it. We just simply have to go in and link have the application is linked to our server. So we never actually have to look at the windshield interface. This actually does everything behind the scenes. So with this, the capabilities of this is you can view documents through the application. So that's what we're looking at the very top is the view, uh, the documents. With that, you can see the properties and any additional content that may be associated with it. You can see the drawings. So we can view drawings to see dimensional values that may be on there. We can see part properties. We can go in and see a components parts list, just a flat parts list. But we can also see a part structure. 
We can also view and download the design files if necessary. And if we can also go in and view and measure in 3D. Uh, what it's going to do is pull it up in product view or uh, Creo view, sorry, and allow you to go through and view and maybe do measurements directly inside of Creo view. So at the top, we have for our document um, application. Towards the bottom, we have the applications for our parts. And we'll go into more detail on that in just a moment. All right. Once again, some of the benefits, uh, make it available only to those apps needed by the user or the group. So basically, they're not going to see a bunch of stuff that they don't need to see. We're going to go in and limit what they're able to go in and see. Pre-configured layout types, attributes to um, ideally suit the needs of the users of the groups. Minimize the need of training. Once again, it's very simple. I want to go in and I want to access, I want to view a drawing. I select on the view drawing, type in the name or the number of the drawing that I'm looking for. It pulls it up in, inside a Creo view and allows me to go through and view that information. Uh, speed adoption and agility, increase efficiency, because once again, we're not going through and looking at a, at a, a lot of stuff that we don't need to see. So they just see exactly what they what they what is necessary. And then reduce errors and rework. Now, mind you that although we're pulling up in a separate app, this is real time as to what's inside of Windchill. So we're still looking at what's in Windchill. We're just doing it through a separate application. So everything that we're looking at is real time, the latest and greatest of the information. So once again, groups of users can be associated with, a, with an app collection. So once again, here we have an individual that just need to see documents. That's the only app that they're going to see. We have individuals here that need to view drawings or view documents. Once again, that's all they're going to go in and see. They don't need to see the actual 3D models. They just need documents and the drawings. And then over here, you may have additional individuals, maybe from the shop floor or whatever, that may need to go in and see a parts list. You know, the design files that may be associated with that, um, as well as the part structure and a view of the 3D model. So each app collection can be independently tailored uh, for unique search constraints, filtered set of formats, excuse me, of formats and unique part and document attribute sets. So one of the things that's beneficial, and I'll show you when we actually go into the demonstration, is that we can actually use some of our search save searches that we have inside of Windchill as one of the uh, searches that we use inside of the application. So we can actually set that up as the administrator. So when we're going in, and we're viewing the document, then we have it set up where this document uses a specific search and it only searches for document files. You won't see part files, you won't see CAD files, you won't see change notices or anything like that. You'll just see document files. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into our demonstration. All right, so right now I am logged in currently as an administrator. So I'm in here as WC admin. admin. What you're seeing now is the page that administrator is going to see. This shows all of the apps that are available. And what you also see that you won't see as an individual user, and I'll um, log in as a user in just a moment, is you'll see these little editing icons. We can go through and edit each one of these little sections, or we can go in and do an overall edit. So as you can see, this is broken down into the parts area. It's also broken down into the documents area. So if I come over here and select on the edit of the entire application, we can come over here and manipulate what's actually being shown. So basically search results display limit. How many search results do we want to see? So we may have, you know, we may go in and search for a part number, but that part number, the, the string that we're looking for may be you know, in 50 different parts. So we can go on a limit and say only show me 50, or I can use this drag handle or the drag bar and simply want to reduce the number that I want to go in and see. So just show me 19 or 20 or 25, however many I want to go in and see. Also, once you go in and you execute your searches and you begin to now view different files, those things are stored as well. So you also have recent search display limits. So how many of these recent searches do I want to go in and see? So right now the default is at five. I can go in once again, reduce that. The maximum number that we can show on a page is 20. Um, you can also go through and recent search data shape. 
Um, this is going in and once again, tailoring what's actually being displayed when we go in and execute our search. Um, now, also we have these two check boxes down here, use CAD documents as parts and allow partial uh, match matches in search. Now, this application, if you look up here at the top, common tailoring for parts apps, what this application is searching for out of the box are WT parts. So it's searching for part files because a lot of companies nowadays are using parts as their structures. So a lot of their information is stored inside of the parts. So the, the links to the CAD files, the link to the document files, the links to you know JPEGs, movies, whatever it may be. So what they're doing is now allowing this search to go in and find that top level item that will now give you the ability to see everything that may be associated with it. So a lot of companies are doing that, but not all companies are doing that. So what this allows us to do is for those companies that aren't necessarily using WT parts fully, they may be using them partially, but not completely. We can still go in and have it search for CAD files as well. So we type in part numbers. It'll also go in and search for a part number uh, for a CAD file as well as for a WT part file. We also have the ability to allow for partial searches. So instead of going in and looking just for the string that you type in there, it may be part of the string um, in the name, and it will still go in and find that. Now, also out of the box, it's searching just for the number. Once again, uh, because of the integration of WT parts or even just a numbering scheme that people are using on their files, the number may be all that you need. So we can go in and search for a number or Maybe we need to go in and search for a name. I know what it's called. I just don't know what the number is for it. So I can go in and search for a name and give it the string name. Or I can go through and designate that I want to search for the number or the name. So whatever I type in, find it if it's in the number or if it's inside the name. Then we can come down here and edit the search filters. So basically, do we want to go through and enable our search filters? If we say yes, that we can go in and create a search filter and save that, which once again will allow us to go through and limit what individuals will be able to see. Uh, we can also go in and use save searches. As I said before, I've had this save search called docs that is inside of my windchill. Uh, that is save search. This is a global save search. That's how this is displayed because it's used, it can be seen by everybody. So I can go in and use this search to go in and execute. Uh, my searches as well. I can also go through and make sure that I'm finding the latest at a particular state, or I can go in and make sure that I am going in to find the latest version of the file. So for what I'm doing, I'm actually not going to go through and use any of the filters. So I will go in and leave these um, edits up here at the top, and then I'll go in and save that, and it simply lets me know that this, that this has now been successfully saved. All right, so then this is a shortcut to go back to all of the apps. And then once again, individually, I can come in and edit. Now, these are the actual apps that you would go in and edit, or I should say, these are the mashups that they're called that will allow you to go through and specify what formats you want to go in and search for, as well as what properties you want to see when you're going in and executing your search. Um, these would actually be executed outside of this. It'll bring up the actual things works. Um, application where you can go through and edit that. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go in and minimize as the uh, as the admin, and I'm now going to go in and open up the application as the regular user. So as you can see, with the regular user, I don't have any of the edit abilities inside of here. Now, what I want to go in and do is I want to go through and search for a document. So I want to simply go in and view a document. So I'm going to select the view. And then in, inside of here, I will go in and type in the number that I'm looking for. So I will go in and start it with the number. I used a wildcard at the beginning. And now I will go through and execute that file. Now. If this file had a representation, let's say a PDF or something like that, it would actually show up here. I also have the ability to directly open up this file inside of the application. So I can come over here and say open. 
and I'll open it up in Microsoft Word and I can go in and see exactly what this file is. So I can see that this is once again it's a simple document that we've used. All right, go back to the search. And then as you can see, once again, it's now recording what I've just recently looked at. So I can now come in, let's search for, uh, if I can find document. I don't think so. It's not going to find that MathCAD document that I'm looking for. But I do have additional documents that I can go through and find as well. Then once again, I can open those up directly, or if I do want to go in and download that file, I can go in and save this directly to my hard drive. All right, so it's very simple for documents. You just simply find the document, once again, with the representation of it. It may be a PDF representation. It may be just a, sim a simple image that was created of the document, um, and you can view that document right there on the screen. Now, what you can also do is with our part files. So this up here, once again, is by default, it's looking for part files, but we can go through and associate this to our um, design files. So I wanna find all the design files that are associated with whatever part I'm looking up. So I'm gonna go in and say view design files, and the document that I want to see is six one. Not finding the document, or it's not finding the part file. Let's see if it'll find it by the name. Okay. So found it by the name, and what I'm looking for is a break. Let's use this one. So this has the documents. This one doesn't have the design files in it. Of course not. But what it will show will be any additional attachments. So inside of Windchill, when you're in your WT parts, um, you can go through and, of course, attach any type of document. So it may be a Word document. It may be a PDF document. It may be, once again, a video file, whatever it may be. This would actually go in and show you what those specific design files are. So whatever additional attachments uh, may be associated with that, whether it's a reference document, whether it's a, a described by document, all those will be seen here. And I will go back to my, uh, my original files, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to search for a drawing. I'm going to search for a drawing by the name, and I'm going to use a name of hub. As you can see, it goes in and finds everything that is a hub, and I'm going to come over and select on the drawing. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, what it does is it goes in and it brings up that file. So because I said I want to view the drawing, as soon as I go in and select on the actual file, it immediately wants to go in and open up the drawing. Now, I currently don't have this set up to go in where the plot files will open up inside of Creo View, but I'm going to go in and browse to my Creo view application. So I need to go here. So I'm gonna then pull up the drawing inside of Creo view. 
And then once again, it allows me to go through, zoom in on the areas. If I need to go in and find a specific dimension that may be missing, I can go through and zoom in and find that information on the screen, whatever I need to do. All right, so then I'll go back once again, I'll go back to the home. So these are the icons for my home screen. And at this point, I wanna go through and let's just view a parts list. I have an assembly that I wanna go through and see the parts list for. So this assembly, Not sure why it's not executing the search in the manner in which I'm selecting. So I'm not 100% sure why it's not pulling up everything because um, it should be searching by both CAD files and WT part files, but it's not finding at this point, it's not finding either one of those. So let's see. There's one. Okay, so this is the assembly. So as you can see, with that, it is showing the actual parts list. We can see down here at the bottom that it actually shows the individual parts list. It shows the name of the files, the versions, the states, the quantities, who was the last person to modify it, and when it was last modified. Now, the benefit here is as I go through and select on the individual parts, it also brings them up <clears throat> pardon me, in a thumbnail on the right side of the screen that will allow me to go through and see what each each part actually is. Now, the other thing that's beneficial is that as you notice, you have all these icons here, which are says, the same icons that was on my home screen. So if I wanna go from my parts list to the actual part structure, I just simply come over here and select on the part structure icon, and now it takes it and it breaks it down into the actual part structure. Now, because all this is one level, we just sim simply see a single indentation. But same thing, as I go through and select on the individual files, I can see them highlight over here on the thumbnail, as well as see the individual information on the right side. General parts properties. This, once again, is customizable. So if there's more information that I wanted to see, such as maybe the description information, vendor information, things like that, I can customize this to actually show that information on the screen as well. And then if I did want to go in and view this in 3D, I can go through and select on that. That icon, it will then bring it up into Creo View. But once again, as we know with Creo View, because it's an assembly, it doesn't pull everything up at once. I simply come over here and select on it to go in and display everything. And now I can view that in my 3D mode. So if I need to go through and do a measurement, I can go through and do that as well. All right. And then if this has any related documents, those will show up here as well. And this is once again viewing the drawings. So that's where this is beneficial as well, is just simply being able to go in and access the information. So of having to go back and forth between the app's homepage, once you go into an item such as an assembly, you know, I can go in and view that. Now, if I want the information on that item, I can just simply select it from there. And of course, because that's a part, there's no parts list, 
But if I want to view that in a 3D mode, I can go through and view now that washer in a 3D mode. So each hyperlink is active for individual components. So as you can see, once again, it is going in and just storing two of our search results because that's what we went in and set that for. So let's come back over here to the administrator and turn that off. So now let's come back in here and view our parts list. And there's our parts list. So it's using, as soon as it comes up, it'll go through and show us the actual structure for this top level car because it's now searching for our WD parts. And once again, this is the top level assembly, so it is taking it a few minutes just to go through and populate the entire parts list for that top level pro car. So once again, you can also see that when we're inside of the uh, parts list, we still have all of the same options available uh, for our structure, parts, uh, um, properties, view in 3D, view drawing, and of course any additional associated items. Maybe selecting the top level is not the best way to see. Okay, let's go back. Search for something a little bit smaller. So this is once again the e-bomb. You can see it found it. There's an e-bomb and an m-bomb directly associated with this. So there's an engineering bomb and there's also a manufacturing bomb associated with it as well. So neither one of them actually have any parts associated with them. So and then we have just as a last item to look at. We also have the case here. And of course, because this is not an actual assembly, there is no parts list there, but we can always go in and view it in our 3D mode to want to do measurements on it if we needed to. So that's the benefit of the app, or one of the benefits, one of the additional benefits of the app is that although I'm inside of my parts list search, I can still search for anything. And because I have the ability to go to the different uh, apps from here, I can just simply go in and select on the one that I want. All right. So I will now go back into my presentation to wrap everything up. All right, so PTC Navigate, uh, with that, just general information on the, the packaging and the licensing, um, is a single license, excuse me, single license includes solutions, access, and required platform components. So once again, you have one user license. With that license, is PLM and ALM solutions accessed read-only and limited to um, information exposed in the app, ThingWork server for runtime deliverable, uh, excuse me, delivery of the apps, tailored, excuse me, tailored using out-of-the-box PTC Navigate view application, uh, tailoring interface, and once again, tailoring bundle widgets to show PLM and ALM um, attributes. Uh, once again, so for that, you have the PTC solution users, you have the ThingWorks application, 
And then once again, through the actual theme works um, interface, we can now go through it and specify what we're going to go in and access. All right, so with the licenses, the licensing for it is subscription only. So this isn't something that you can purchase uh, for a perpetual license. You will need to go through and do this as a subscription. Now, you do have two types of licensing. You have a registered license and you have an active daily user license. <coughs> Excuse me. A registered license is a license is registered to an individual user. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that individual is basically like using a name user license. And then you have the um, view active directory, excuse me, active daily user license. An active daily user license is a unique user who accesses the application anytime during a 24 hour period for a particular day. The user is active for that particular day. So this is beneficial when you don't have just one individual um, that's gonna go through and access the data. You may have multiple individuals and they may access it on different dates. So you don't have everybody bombarding the system at one time. So you can have an active uh, daily user license where, okay, this person uses it on today, somebody else uses it tomorrow, another person uses it um, Monday and Tuesday, so on and so forth. So that user is active for a 24 hour period. So that's what the active daily user license is. So you can go through and use that one once again when you have an organization where not, you don't have everybody using it at the same time. All right, now for platform support, as I said before, the upgrading ability of this. This is supported in Windchill 10.1, um, M40 and M50, also uh, Windchill 10.2, M20, uh, CPS 06 or later, or 230, excuse me, or M30, uh, CPS, <clears throat> excuse me, 01 or later, and of course, in all versions of 11, this will be available. Um, ThingWorks uh, 6.1, um, Convergent Core Extension 1.1, Windchill Extension 1.2, and then Windows Server 2010, also Red Hat Linux, Enterprise Linux, um, RHEL 7, Update 1. And then you also have for your client platform, Mac or PC, you can use IE version 10, Firefox, Safari, and then Chrome. <coughs> now, the notes down at the bottom, the 3D visualization is supported on Windows clients only with Firefox and IE browser. Support for Chrome is planned for mid-year of 2016. Uh, mobile devices can use the application through the mobile browser but no 3D visualization is supported on mobile devices. Native mobile support is expected by late 2016. So as I stated before, you can't access this using any type of device that you have. So you can use this on your tablet or on your phone, but you still have to access it through the browser. There isn't an app for this yet. That's something that they're looking to do um, later on, uh, possibly later on in the year to go in and be able to access this natively through the mobile devices. And then once again, the deployment of the actual ThingWorks software. So ThingWorks, when you put it on the same um, server as Windchill, uh, for ThingWorks, you need uh, a four core CPU and you need four gig of RAM. If you're using it as a ThingWorks server only, then you still need your four core CPU but you'll also need six gig of RAM, four for Tomcat and two for the OS. And that's what they're simply showing in the, in the diagram here. All right, at this point, um, I'll open it up for any questions. Um, inside of your uh, go to meeting or go to webinar area, you have an area for questions. Uh, you can type in your questions, I can answer them as they come through. So we'll see if there are any questions at this point in time. Questions, no questions, no questions. Okay, looks like everybody at this point is okay. Um, 
I hope that this demonstration gave you a better outlook on how the um, apps for windshield work. Um, we will have additional uh, webinars associated with this as far as maybe some of the customizations that we'll do. We'll go through and show that as well. Uh, but this kind of gives you an overall aspect on how to use the uh, PTC applications or PTC windshield apps to go in and access the actual data with inside of windshield. Uh, and once again, this is available for windshield. You can use it uh, as well as for your SAPs and it can be customized based on the roles that they need access to. So once again, I thank you for your attendance in this webinar. And if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact myself, uh, Michael Wimberly, um, or mwimberly at boundarysys.com. My phone number is 415, area code 513-415-0747. Or if you have any sales directed questions, you can contact uh, Carrie Tanko Dillon. Um, at ctanko at boundarysys.com and her number is 440-409-5898. Once again, thank you for your attendance and have a great rest of the afternoon.